Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Jason Bakke. I'm a storage development principal engineer with Dell EMC. I've uh, been with the company about nine and a half years. Uh, in this session, I'm actually going to talk about and actually um, demonstrate the migration of VMware's vCloud Director from a traditional Linux cell uh, with an external Microsoft SQL Server database to the embedded uh, Postgres SQL database within a vCloud Director 9.7 appliance. A uh, little background information on this environment that I'm using to uh, that I'm using for the demonstration. Uh, this is an environment I built for our technical marketing group about nine years ago. Uh, I deployed it. I've been maintaining it over the years, upgrading it, and like many VMware products, um, early on. Um, we used a Microsoft SQL Server database backend. And so I've been using this, uh, it's actually on SQL Server 2016 uh, today. Um, but what's important to note uh, is as of uh, VMware vCloud Director 9.7, um, support for the SQL Server backend database externally, that goes away. So um, we need to shift this environment to Postgres, Postgres SQL uh, with the embedded uh, vCloud Director 9.7 compliance. So I'm actually going to perform both of those steps in one shot here. Uh, the migration to the appliance off the, I think it's a CentOS cell that I'm using today, as well as um, embedded PostgreSQL. It's actually not as complicated as it might sound. Um, I've actually been through uh, these types of migrations uh, three different times, um, and this is the this is the fourth uh, migration that I'm performing. Um, you simply follow VMware's documentation. The documentation is uh, very well laid out, and it boils down to four major steps. And you can see those on the screen uh, on the presentation display here. Um, step one or stage one is upgrade the existing environment to vCloud Director 9.7. Um, that's important uh, because VMware wants us to be on the same exact version for the existing cell when we make that jump to the new um, appliance. Uh, so the second stage is to deploy the new vCloud Director 9.7 appliance. Uh, the third stage is to migrate the SQL backend database to PostgreSQL. And then the last step or last stage is to copy any shared transfer service data, which we will do. And optionally, um, if you use um, certificates uh, beyond just the self-signed certificates, we need to migrate those as well. I do not demonstrate the certificate migration in this video, although uh, that is a that is a, a fairly easy and, and well-documented step. So we're going to go into the lab demonstration now, and we're actually going to watch this migration and deployment take place. So again, the first stage is to upgrade our existing environment to vCloud Director 9.7. Now, in the interest of time, um, I have a 15-minute presentation slot here. I've already actually gone ahead and upgraded uh, my existing cell. I've been through these upgrades many times over the years. You've probably been through the upgrades. Here, I'm just going to go and show that, verify that we're on version uh, 9.7, which is going to be the version of the appliance that we're going to migrate to. I'm also going to just kind of float around, spend about 30 seconds here just checking the health, make sure that my V apps are up and running. There's no error messages. Uh, we get a couple different uh, looks here at the V apps that are deployed. And those are the types I want to, things that I want to see uh, when we're done with the migration. Here I'm going to use a, an, an application called uh, Dell EMC Replay Manager. I want to make sure that I have a good snapshot or backup before uh, we go through the migration. So um, I use Replay Manager, as you can see, we're uh, quiescing the virtual machines um, that I'm using as a backup. So I have a point in time backup of not only the vCloud Director 9.7 cell, um, I also have a backup and an a, uh, application and data consistent snapshot of the SQL database. And here you can see using the Dell EMC plugin, I can verify that I've, I've actually just taken a snapshot um, of both in their application and data cons uh, consistent. Stage two, we're going to deploy the new vCloud Director appliance. 
Now, before I do that, um, you'll see in the documentation steps that VMware has, and I'll, I'll post the link at the end of the, the video here, uh, we need to create um, a new NFS share for uh, the vCloud Director Transfer, Share Transfer Service uh, data. Um, for this particular environment, I'm actually using a Windows NFS share. So I'm creating a new share here, allowing no root squash for that share, which is important. Click apply. Okay. And we'll actually go back and revisit um, the screen a little later after the deployment and verify that the vCloud director, the new vCloud director cell has actually written the information into there. It's very important that that shared transfer space is working properly um, for the health and well-being of the vCloud director environment. Now I'm going to open up a web browser and we're going to go ahead and deploy the vCloud director 9.7 appliance. Okay, so I, I used some time compression here. I think I used 8x. Um, this is simply the deployment of an OVF appliance and um, this step actually takes about, I want to say, 10 minutes or so, um, not only to fill out all the information, but for uh, the completion of the deployment, um, as well as um, we're going to actually power on the vCloud director cell, watch that boot up, and then, uh, and then we'll pick up where that leaves off. But I'll show it all here. You can see I'm not, uh, not skipping anything important. So our vCloud director cell has now deployed. Uh, first thing we need to do now is to power it on, and I'm going to open up a web console and just kind of watch the boot up sequence. You will see a couple of error messages there. That's quite normal. Um, but it's going to, uh, upon first boot, it's going to uh, run some post-deployment scripts or installation scripts based on the information that we provided in the deployment of the OVF. And again, I use time compression here because it's not a good use of time to sit and watch that. I wouldn't be able to finish this video within 15 minutes. So you can see our, our cell has deployed. We're at that blue screen at the end. That signifies that we're done. And we can now actually open a web browser and go to um, the vCloud Director uh, provider page. And I'm doing that now. So we're going to log in for the first time as administrator. There's no other accounts uh, linked to this provider instance. Um, we've, we've, we've provided really no configuration and we've not imported any configuration from our previous um, vCloud Director cell. So um, this deployment is happening in parallel and then in um, the third and fourth steps, we'll migrate over the database and bring over the configuration data. So you can see just by looking at the screen here, um, this, is an, this is an empty, unpopulated cell waiting for configuration. I'm going to actually um, SSH as root into the new cell. And the first thing we're going to do, again, I'm following uh, VMware's documentation, very good documentation on these steps. We're going to stop the vCloud Director uh, service. First, we'll check the status, but we will end up stopping those. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're checking the status of v SQL. And now I'm going to tail uh, the uh, cell.log. Uh, really what I'm looking for here is just to look at uh, performing some health checks of the new cell that it deployed, making sure there's no abnormalities or errors. Because if there are, we of course, we want to stop um, and, may, and correct those errors before we continue. Now we can see, now I'm actually looking at the NFS server and we can see that the new cell has populated information into that shared transfer service. That verifies that my NFS mount is working correctly. We have no permissions issues. Okay, I'm going to log into now as root into um, uh, port 5480 and check uh, PostgreSQL health and that looked good. Stage three, is going to be uh, migrating the SQL database. So now we've got two cells, the old, what I'll call the old cell or the existing cell, running side by side with the new vCloud Director appliance. So I'm going to log into or SSH into the uh, both cells. Uh, the old cell or the existing cell will be in the upper left corner. Uh, the new cell is going to be in the lower right, and we'll do a little bit of work in each of those cells uh, to perform the database right, migration. So. Uh, this is the portion where we're going to stop the vCloud Director service, uh, our daemon, on both cells. 
use the same command on both. And now we're going to continue um, our work in the new cell. Now, according to the instructions, uh, we need to perform or actually create an allow rule on the, VPO on the Postgres database to allow external um, traffic in the form of you know, the database migration that we're going to perform. We do that by creating this text file. Okay? And we provide the IP address and the account and group that we want to have access to the Postgres database on the new cell. I've done that using VI. I've verified with a cat command that that new file and information was populated. What that does in turn is actually populates yet another file under var VMware um, with that allow rule information. So now that allows us to go back to our, uh, our, our old cell and we're going to perform the database migration. It's a, you can see the, the command in there. Um, we're telling um, we're telling the cell to migrate the database using the cell ma management tool to the new uh, v Postgres SQL uh, database listening on uh, IP address 188.144.114, or sorry, 14. And there's a password in there that I've pixelated out. And this process actually doesn't take very long. It could vary but based on the size and environment environment, but when it's done, what we're looking for is data by migration secret succeeded, um, a success, zero failures, zero skips. Um, again, if you see anything other than that, probably stop, reattempt the migration. So the last stage or last step is to migrate uh, the shared data information. So we're going to copy over some files from the old environment to the new environment. And you know, aside from the SQL database that we just migrated, um, these, I think it's five files. These five files hold the configuration of the vCloud director environment. We're gonna actually gonna use these files once we copy them over to perform a, an unattended or scripted installation of vCloud director in that new environment. So you can see, see we've copied over global.properties, response.properties, certificates, proxy certificates, and trust or um, over to the new cell, okay? And uh, once we're done with that, these files will be used for that unattended installation. Now, based because of the, um, the nature and the security implications around using the SCP command, I have to provide the root password for each of the five files that I'm copying over. Okay, so this is where we're actually running the unattended um, installation using those files. Um, this is the opt VMware vCloud director bin configure command with a whole bunch of switches. And again, the documentation provides those switches, um, but this imports the remaining configuration data into the, v, the new vCloud director uh, cell appliance. So now we're going to start the vCloud director service on the new cell. And I'm actually going to tail the cell.log file and um, watch for any errors or abnormalities here. And once this is 100% completed and we don't see um, this file continuing to write, that's, that's a good indicator that uh, the cell daemons are now started and we can actually log in with a web browser and uh, perform a quick health check and verify that all of our vApps have been migrated and the health of the database is um, intact. And we're just about there. And cell startup is complete. It took 59 seconds. It actually takes longer to start up the cell than it does to, to migrate the data. So now we're gonna log in to the provider console of the new cell. I'm gonna use the administrator account here, but at this point, um, my other domain connected accounts should exist because they were copied over as part of the configuration. Now we can see, and there they are, there's the three users that, uh, that I have imported. And we can see I've got it pixelated out, but our license file has been migrated over as well as part of the, the configuration. And there's our tenant, Texol, and there are all of our vApps are now populated in the new cell by way of the database migration. 
And we can look at just another view here in the MyCloud view, serve various vApps and the VMs within those vApps. We've got a couple steps left here. I'm going to take a look at uh, the vCenters here, and you can see that our NSX manager on the right-hand side has been carried over. That's also important for the deployment of VMs. One of the last steps we want to perform is we need to delete the old uh, cloud cell. And that's quite simple. Right-click, choose delete. So now the only cell we have left in there is the single cell of our new deployment. Now we're going to power off the old cell, and we're going to delete it. Remember, we took a snapshot or a backup of this. So if at any point in time uh, something went sideways here, we have a good uh, we have a good rollback point and we can fix and reattempt. I've pixelated out some of our VM names here in this environment. But you can see we're looking at the VCD cell two, and we are complete at that point. So um, I showed all of the steps. I didn't skip anything. I did use time compression on some of them in the interest of time, but um, following the, uh, the detailed documentation, um, it's not a complex procedure. Just make sure you have um, some form of back, backup. Um, use array-based snapshots if you can. Um, I would also recommend um, using quiescence if you're going to snapshot your SQL database and your cloud cells while they're online. If you do not have the ability to quiesce um, the data to get uh, app and data consistent snapshots. Um, one method you could do is request an, out an outage from your tenant and shut down both the SQL server um, and the, the old cell and then take a snapshot that way. And then you're sure that, that we've lost no data in flight and then power them back on. Um, that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to leave you with links um, to uh, two documentation uh, resources. They actually, they're both, they both point to the steps uh, required that I followed to perform this migration. One is simply the online documentation on the top. Um, if you prefer reading PDFs or printing out PDFs, um, there's the vCloud Director 9.7 installation guide on the bottom. Skip right to page 115, and it's 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 really I think it's about three or four pages, not even four, to follow these steps. Um, but you follow these steps, and you'll be successful, and you'll you'll have your Migration completed, and at this point in time going forward, you will be off SQL Server, and you'll be in your new um, embedded v Postgres SQL environment. Uh, thank you all for joining, and I wish you all a wonderful VM world.